Hello, welcome to the first real lecture um, in our subject, public health and health policy. Policy is juggling, and uh, later on I will tell you why I think policy making is juggling. But to explain that, first I have to go into um, the roots of political thought. I will tell you what I think political thought is. Uh, that is um, also the, the foundation of uh, modern political science. And I will tell you that the key to political thought or doing politics um, is choice. And what I want to choose may not be what you want to choose. And therefore, there is conflict and all politics is about conflict. I also need to talk about uh, a bit of history. Uh, we will start quite early on. With, uh, with political thought. We will start with um, a guy called Sun Tzu, who lived in the 6th century before Christ. He was a Chinese general, and he wrote a book called The Art of War. Um, it's, a, it's a nice, interesting primer on how to win wars. And for me, the important messages uh, from his little book are these. That first of all, you have to know the enemy before you wage war or want to win a battle. You need to know how strong they are, the, the enemy is, where they are, whether they are well prepared, um, etc. You also need to know the terrain. Um, on flat country, you have to wage a different kind of battle than on hilly country. And the same is true for politics. You have to know where you're playing the game. And if you strike, you have to strike decisively. Uh, if you don't think that there might be any chance for success, it's probably better to not do anything at all. We jump a couple of centuries to Niccolo Machiavelli, who also wrote an interesting book called Il Principe, The Prince. And Machiavelli, um, and you may have heard about Machiavellian behavior, um, which often is uh, seen as uh, cynical, opportunistic behavior, um, but Machiavelli uh, really um, was, was a very clever uh, advisor of, um, of an Italian prince. And the prince asked him, how do I win what I want to accomplish? Well, he wrote in metaphors, and um, one metaphor that he uses is that a prince, a politician, needs to be a fox and a lion. You need to be foxy, clever, cunning, astute, but you also need to be a lion. You need to strike um, and be, be prepared to kill if you want to win the game. He also wrote that you need to maintain your objective. Um, you can make detours in, in your political behavior, but ultimately you have to do everything that's necessary to win. So you have to keep your eye on the ball. And again, like Sun Tzu, he said, you need to strike decisively. If you do something, be ruthless and do it to, to win. Although sometimes, and that is the foxy part of uh, Machiavelli, um, small losses may be uh, steps toward uh, a, a decisive strike. We jump uh, a few hundred years to uh, Thomas Hobbes, a British political philosopher, who wrote a book that's called Leviathan. And in Leviathan, he outlines uh, what he believes is the role of the state. And the state in, in our current world is um, where politics happens. Of course, there's politics uh, with, with a small letter P, which is how people behave with each other and uh, try to gain as much as they can from their uh, mutual relationships, but politics with a capital P is a state affair. In describing the role of the state, Hobbes believed that men ultimately, humans ultimately, are selfish. They choose for themselves. They don't, they don't choose uh, for others. Now, this is contradicted by other political philosophers like uh, Martin Buber, uh, a Jewish philosopher, who says, no, we live to do good and to, to help others. Hobbes says, no way, that is not true. Man is selfish. 
He also said that um, in that selfish world, the state organizes justice so that everybody, even the weaker in society, uh, can be receiving uh, just treatment. And he was the first to say that the state uh, is the only actor in the game that has a monopoly on violence. No one else should uh, should be able to uh, undertake violence. Now, if we look at uh, many of the hotspots in the world these days with guerrillas and, uh, and, and fights, um, just think of, uh, of Syria, um, you see that, that lots of others uh, resist uh, the monopoly on violence in the state. Um, and in, in Hobbes terms, that is to, in order to overthrow the state. So violence in itself is never a purpose. Violence um, happens because you want to have state-like powers in countries like Syria. We jump uh, a few more centuries to the father of, uh, of political science, the modern, the father of modern political science, Harold Laswell. He was an American and uh, his most famous book was um, Politics, Who Gets What, Why and When. And this is the shortest definition of politics that you can get. Who gets what? Um, it is clear that if you're a liberal, you have different ideas about who gets what than when you're a social democrat or a Marxist or an anar anarchist. Lesbo said, ultimately, it is about who gets what. He also described uh, political behavior as a psychopathology. He said that uh, politicians um, are never altruistic. They are always selfish, um, just like Hobbes said. But he, uh, Laswell actually said, well, this is a psychopathology. These people have a certain condition in their mental health that makes them behave like politicians. Laswell also was the father of propaganda. Um, many people believe that uh, Goebbels, Nazi Germany, uh, invented propaganda. But uh, in fact, it was Harold Laswell in the 1920s. Who, uh, who, who invented the idea of propaganda for political purposes. I already said in my introduction that, in my view, uh, politics is about choice and choice is about conflict. So uh, a quote that, uh, that has to be included in all of this is Carl Philipp Gottfried von Clausewitz, one of the most famous uh, uh, thinkers about war. But von Clausewitz said, War is nothing but the continuation of politics with different means. And that, may, that just shows you how close politics is with armed conflict. Um, by the way, this quote is also attributed to Otto Graf von Bismarck, the guy that unified Germany in the 19th century uh, for it to become um, first a regional superpower, then a global superpower, and now um, just an economic superpower. But von Clausewitz clearly sees politics as, um, as a, a, a conflict thing. When we look at conflict, is it just fight? Is it just uh, uh, hurting each other? No. I think uh, it is helpful to start thinking about constructing or deconstructing health as a matter of conflict. I said that... Uh, Laswell wrote his book, Who Gets What, Why and When, and it, um, it may be useful to, uh, to see who plays, in, who plays the conflict, who um, argues for choice in the health arena, um, what do they claim, why do they claim it, and when do they get it. Now, who is involved in health, health policy? health politics. Well, professionals such as nurses, doctors, but also engineers and lawyers have something to say about health. The people with the money have something to say um, about, um, about health politics, insurance funds, banks, um, the industry, notably the pharmaceutical industry, but a lot of other industry too. Think of uh, nutrition products, etc. There are organized interests. So where I talked about professionals as individuals, you can also see them as organized entities. 
for instance, the AMA, the Australian Medical Ad uh, Association, or NACHO, um, the, the National Aboriginal Community Contro Controlled Health Organization, or even ANFA, the Australian National Preventive Health Agency. They organize the interests of a group of people, in the case of ANFA, health promoters uh, and health educators. I already talked about capital P and small letter uh, politic, P politics, um, and that is on the left right of the spectrum, it is on the right side of the spectrum, conservative, um, but it's, it could be high politics in parliament, but it could also be low politics in the street. When you talk to your neighbors about issues, you start to, uh, to engage in politics. And of course, and we shouldn't forget this, and in fact, often we do see that uh, the people are forgotten in, in our analysis of politics. Patients, consumers, residents of, uh, of institutions, and for that matter, any inv individual might, uh, might be involved in, uh, in who gets what, why and when. So what would these people get? Well, services. Uh, universal health care, for instance, but uh, the doctors often needs, need hospitals, workplaces to, to work in. People also want to have drugs. Um, what you also get is goods, food, housing, drugs, facilities. Um, when you think of the social determinants of health, um, politics also uh, creates the opportunities for infrastructure for health, but also um, for uh, healthy choices. So infrastructure, wealth, education, hygiene are all things that we get through political choice. We also get people. We get uh, uh, access to public health professionals, health promoters, doctors, and how they are trained and what services they can deliver is determined by politics. And what we also get is values. Do we have the liberty to choose? Is there equity? Are um, the more marginalized groups, the socially excluded groups in society protected? Do we aim for sustainability? So these are the things that we might get. Why would we get them? Well, here in Australia, there's this belief that it's a country of a fair go. Everybody uh, should have the same opportunity to achieve what you want to achieve. Another perspective is that um, this, is, this is a rough world and um, the, the, the free market should arrange for what we get. So why we get it is through uh, an invisible hand that organizes the market. Socialism doesn't believe in the invisible hand and believes that we need to organize society to be a just society. Communitarianism, where things are organized really uh, at the coalface in communities, uh, is yet again another perspective. And then there's humanism that says, no, people, people need to be empowered to make the right decisions. And people decide why they get services and what services they get. When, obviously, we want it now or we want it later. And planning for later clearly is a policy issue. You can provide things conditionally. Only if something happens, you can get it. Only if you have children, you get children benefits. Um, and that, that, is, that is a very clear conditional uh, situation. But you can also think of other conditional situations um, in, in time. Um, only with aging, you are entitled to certain services. When we get things, is that inclusive? Is it for everybody or is it just for people in need? And when you are okay now, you may become in need later on. And um, do we then provide the service at that stage for you as you require? So this is uh, an overview of, uh, of the Laswell approach, the political philosophy of, of Laswell to who gets what, why and when um, in the health field. Is this useful? Well, let's, um, let's specify this with an example. Environments for Health is uh, the Victorian, our state Victorian um, policy brief uh, for local public health, the municipal public health planning framework. 
Um, it's a document that was published uh, about a decade ago um, and says that if we want to make people in Victoria health, healthy, local government has to promote their health and well-being through built social, economic and natural environments. Environments for Health is the Victorian local health planning framework, and it's, it's also the operational evidence base for the municipal public health planning. So municipalities, local governments in Victoria, use the document Environments for Health to claim that the evidence says that this is what they need to do. Environments for Health was established in 2001. Um, I helped evaluating it in 2005 and 2006, um, and we, we, we suggested a couple of improvements. And then the whole framework was redeveloped in 2007. And local governments in Victoria still have to do this. Now, what do they have to do? Well, they have to invest and they have to make policy on the economic environment, the social environment, the built environment, and the natural environment. And the idea is that if you invest in those four environments, that you will get health for all. This is a whole of government perspective. These days we would also call this health in all policy, or some people would call it horizontal policy. Now that's tricky because when you look at these different environments, these are not just or far from areas that public health professionals or doctors are involved in. In the economic environment, it's businesses. In the social environment, it, it is um, uh, education services. It is social work. In the built environment, architects. And in the natural environment, people who are, have an interest in sustainability, for instance, or want to protect nature. Um, what you see here is that those different professionals um, have different views. And therefore, there is the potential for conflict um, in uh, environments for health, in local health policy making here in Australia. To show you how incredibly complex this is, let's look at a particular health issue that we can resolve through the environments for health framework. We know that the evidence is there to address obesity through investments in the economic environment, the social environment, the built environment, and the natural environment. And these are all the linkages. Um, you see that there, there are all sorts of causal and, and, and uh, strong linkages between food intake, uh, exercise, etc. But to exercise, you also need to have the opportunity to exercise. So you need to be able to make those choices. And those choices are determined by a whole set of other things. Um, so the group of people, professions, uh, interest groups, uh, organized interests to deal with the obesity issue is enormous. And they're not all on the same page. Um, McDonald's uh, and other fast food uh, uh, folk um, really don't have the, the health of their customers um, very high on their priority list. Top of their priority list is to make money. Um, and if they have healthy customers, of course, it will help to, uh, to make more money. But that is an idea that needs to be inserted into what is the political philosophy of the obesity pandemic. So what I suggest we could do in uh, the workshop or online is to discuss how these different aspects of the economic, social, built and natural environment, in fact, impact on obesity and make that, uh, that table that I produced earlier and say, okay, who is involved? And do they have the same interest at heart as all the others? And where is the conflict? Because knowing where the conflict is, is a start to resolving the issue. So the bottom line is, we're off to a semester of political thought. And political thought um, is about um, contradictions. Um, about issues that need to be resolved between all these different groups. And I think as a first exercise, we should start thinking about who does what in each of those areas and, uh, and try to understand why health policy is a really complex um, and hard to grasp um, uh, issue. It is, as an expression in Dutch goes, 
um, an eel in, an em in, in a bucket of snot. It is very slippery. It is very hard to put your finger on. So the rest of the semester we'll deal with, uh, with political thought, with conflict, with policy making. Um, and I enjoy this very much and I hope you will enjoy it very much. Maybe you're into um, online gaming. And if you are, download this Democracy 2. Um, it's a wonderful game that allows you to, uh, to explore those different aspects. It is really uh, very much inspired by Harold Laswell's Who Gets What idea about, uh, about politics. Um, I would say try this game, download it, see how you, how you like it. But don't get addicted to it. I think uh, uh, doing this subject is far more important than, uh, than gaming away at this game, although it will contribute to your, um, to your prowess in, uh, in, in politics. Finally, uh, I introduced um, this lecture by saying that I'm biased um, and I only gave four political philosophers because they influenced my thinking. But um, if you're keen for more insights in political thought, uh, there's a very nice website um, by a guy called Graz, um, and he says, well, there are 28 issues in political behavior that you need to appreciate if you really want to appreciate health policy making. So go to the URL that you see at the bottom of this page, and you would find these 28 points, and those 28 points are elaborated on, and you could, uh, you could read this, I guess, in about an hour's time, to get a full appreciation of the, 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 the width and the depth of um, political science, because that is what we will be using for the rest of this semester. See you at my next lecture. Bye bye.